Hello everybody, my name is Renekin and today I have, well not today, well today yes, but for you, if you listen later, uh, some time ago, <laughs> I uh, have a little, well, not a rant, but uh, a reaction to something that is occurring in the gaming scene quite a lot actually, um, at least nowadays and i don't know how it was back then because back then when we weren't so firm with the internet nobody gave a shit really right um so what i was uh worrying about or uh, what i was thinking about was the problem with sequels or the sequel problem um and the thing is that depending on the sequel of a game we suddenly lower our expectations or gener uh, generally speaking from a high perspective we lower our expectation to something that well is not on par with the product before you understand what i mean uh, the best uh, the best example would be um battlefield 4 um if we compare battlefield 3 to what it had to battlefield 4 what it had um we would like see instantly that we would get less out of Battlefield 4 for the time being until a certain amount of uh, DLC is released in comparison what 3 had that is like a superiority mode uh, that is like well a bunch of maps I, if you if you look at Battlefield 4 the maps were cut down from Battlefield to Battlefield we got less and less maps for free or with the game um, and now with the release of Star Wars Battlefront um, and the two factions that are so strongly opposing each other, like um, there's a camp of the, uh, uh, well, Star Wars fanboys, which is, uh, well, I'm kind of in the camp, I'm hoping for a new Star Wars Battlefront, but these are the guys that defend the game and say, well, it's Star Wars. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Star Wars, but it's still a game. So uh, they are in the position of defending the game without seeing the game itself. Well, or like judging what the devs say about the game. So what I was thinking about was, let's compare Battlefront 2, what we got, to Battlefront 3, what we got, or the new Battlefront from EA. And... I played the last Battlefront for like the last one and a half week actively. I did everything. I did collect a conquest. I did online with two friends of mine uh, for quite some time um, in, in co-op LAN, like in local co-op with uh, Hamachi, like online so we could play together because the online service was shut down GameSpy um, and I did the campaign and I did the fun maps and I have to say Battlefront 2 was not so good as people believe it was and um, that is the other side of the camp the people who say Battlefront 2 was a good game a very good game and Battlefront 3, uh, 3 will be shit because features are cut. So I'm in the middle of those camps. And there are plenty of people who are in the middle of those camps, but those are the two extremes that are the loudest on the internet. So I was thinking, well, if we compare Battlefront 2 to any other modern shooter, Battlefront 2 loses because the gunplay was not good. It would glitch out. The AI was not good. The, the supporting AI, like, um, I played, for example, Galactic Conquest on hard. And the AI only won because my AI was like set on easy and, or on normal, it had normal and hard. And those were aimbotters. Like seriously, the AI looked at me from two kilometers away waited 10 seconds and then started shooting straight for the head with every shot that was the ai battlefront 2 and i don't take a no for an answer that was the ai like they looked at you for three to four seconds and then shot you in the head instantly every character 
So um, I can understand if the AI is updated in Battlefront in the new Battlefront, it is good. I have nothing against that. But what about the features that are cut? That is the important part. I know many people didn't like the sequ uh, the prequels. I didn't like the prequels as much as I liked the original story because the prequels had way too much CGI. They were way too clean in comparison to the old movies. Like in the prequels, everything was shiny and new. Um, and well, lightsaber ballad. <laughs> yeah, like it was too fast. The fights were way too fast. I think the fastest uh, on the ranking should be on par with the end fight Vader versus Luke. But when there's a fight, who's like double <laughs> the speed? And also, all the fights had no build up. That was something with the prequels that was shit too. Let me let me quickly say it. I, I rewatched with another friend all the films, every single one, and I thought the Grievous fight took longer than Obi Wan cuts his hand off. Then he was at three instantly, right at the beginning of the fight, and the fight was like three four minutes, totally boring. When we had the Vader fight, which took way longer and had way more build up, but not important, not talking about the uh, prequels too much. What I, what my point was, was um, that why are the prequels cut? The prequels were not good movies in comparison to the old ones. Where well, they were okay, and 3 is my third or second favorite movie because it was the first Star Wars movie I saw because I was a little kid. But um, why are the Clone Wars cut? The Clone Wars were kind of the most awesome part about Star Wars with, uh, along with, well, the story arc of uh, the original trilogy. Like, the Clone Wars had so much going for them, and you can say whatever you want, but the the, the fights and the, uh, well, the big, the huge-sized battles were very awesome. It was like real war why we had in Star Wars like little conflicts here and there and the Death Star thing was also a little conflict but we had like a huge scale war through the entire galaxy and that was awesome it's like the Hoth fight it's like you, you really see war and I don't know why we cut out one of the most essential parts of the Star Wars uh, history thinking that the Clone Wars were even mentioned in the original tr uh, trilogy. Only not just mentioning that. So, I don't know why they cut out the part, especially since uh, most of the troops were just reskins of one another, and uh, I think it would have been more awesome to have clone troopers uh, than the Confederation, with each one he, uh, having one hero, and then the rebels and the empire having one hero each. So, having that out of the way, why are they cancelling space fights? And I know people say space fights suck, but that leads to my point. Why cancel something out of a game because it sucks? Why not improving on the concept? That is the point I don't understand about people defending this. Why does something have to be cancelled or totally not regarded if something similar is first of all in place in, for example, Battlefield with air superiority? It's nothing, it's, it's like no difference. You have starting bay areas, you start, fly, battle, and then ending. Like, you don't have to include really all of the we have to destroy the enemy frigate stuff and win instantly. That was bullshit. The concept was totally bullshit. Like, then have have it give you a buff for your entire team if you destroy the enemy frigate. Because that was like the instant win. Everyone was flying fucking bombers and destroying the frigate. And no space battling was made. Um... But the concept of it was so good. Why don't we improve on that concept and scratch it totally? The same goes for things like, well, hmm, maybe 
multiple uh, for the for the uh, prequel trilogy i understand that many of the prequel things were reskins as i mentioned before i totally know what i said two minutes ago no worries but why don't we improve on the concept and just make it a bit different like the balancing was out of whack in in uh, battlefront 2 like the um confederation was underpowered and the uh, rebellion was underpowered in regards to the clone troopers and the imperials so why don't we improve on that concept balance it out and let us have fun the thing is we want to have fun and i can't understand why we want a game that allows us custom loadouts okay i i totally dig that i uh can understand this from a gameplay perspective because uh, for example why would always run uh, why would we always use the same weapons i would have been totally okay with having for example a normal stormtrooper with shotgun in battlefront 2 um but the thing is why don't we improve on the concept of uh, which now now i'm realizing this where is the problem then with including cl the clone wars because that's only skins you can't just reskin everything like the whole troopers and stuff the animations are there there's no huge difference between a stormtrooper and a clone trooper and um well the only difference in being the well the style of the armor but the animation set can be this exact same nobody would give a fuck like the battlefield soldiers all have the same animation moves uh, the animation set no one gives a flying fuck about that um the only problem would be the droids from the confederation which is okay um there would be a slight problem but we could work around so next thing be, uh, next thing being why do we cut all of the heroes han chewbacca Layer three mo of the most important of the really most important characters in the entire story are cut from the game, and I don't know why. I, I as far as I understood it, we only get Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Why don't we get Boba Fett, fucking Sidious, and someone else to balance out Chewbacca because? then we would have one lightsaber fighter well ben kenobi why not ben kenobi ah fuck wouldn't work either because we have three people who shoot with blasters and against two with lightsaber and one with blaster so we could find someone else to well you know the drill right we could for example um make an imperial officer like takim takim uh you know who i mean the grand moth um can make him a character for example on the death star map um and we could make for example i don't know ben kenobi as a uh counterpart for well sidious would that make such a difference yes animation wise and voice acting wise yes but why not give us that i guarantee you i fucking guarantee you that will be dlc stuff that is so obvious as well as space battles they just remap air superiority and make it space battles why because they can dish out extra development time for that because they had to rush the game out it has to be done before the movies and this is another point i don't understand the people are so confident that this game will be good um that i cannot understand how they I, I i can't get this dice set the game will be short uh, will be out shortly before episode 7 which is totally fine they want to get the movie money totally okay but the big but they said they stopped development because of the battlefield 4 problems so why in three fuck's sake if they stop development on a project for two months 
didn't anything change in terms of we released the movie right before episode 7? I don't understand this. How can you be still confident that this game will run perfectly fine? And I would see it on Gamescom because, well, I live 50 minutes away from the Cologne, uh, from Cologne, so it doesn't matter, like, I'm instantly there, I'm there the whole weekend. I will play Battlefront definitely if, the, if it's there, which I will bet because Battlefield was there, everything was always there. So I can play Battlefront. The thing is, why do I have the feeling, like, I will totally stop. No, I won't pre-order the game. The, the game is, what, in a key store already 30, 25 because of the negative press. And um, I can understand because, uh, I can understand that because everyone who played Alpha and everyone who played on um, E3 said the game is boring. It's like looking good, but it feels wonky. And that is the first sign. And if they, after a few months, couldn't improve on a showcase version, which on Battlefield 4 was the problem, the game crashed three times in 15 minutes on a presentation PC for everyone. The fuck. And I still pre-ordered that, and I saw what I got out of that. I, uh... I was one of the netcode uh, people who got really fucked over because my internet is not good. Like, I'm recording this while I'm re uploading a video, a, a Dark Souls video, because uh, that takes seven hours. That 20 minute video. Woo! Um, and if I get these signs, I'm not convinced that DICE, for example, can make prequels, uh, sequels. Because Every time we got a battlefield in the last few years, except for 3.3 3 was okay at the beginning, it was totally fine. But DICE, at the moment, Hardline, cut down version from 4. Why? Star Wars, if we are unlucky, which I don't hope, I want this game to be good, but you don't give me a reason to believe in it. Why can't you make good sequels? When EA is knocking on your door and fucking you over royally because of deadlines, which was almost always the excuse later on when some dev left dies and said, well, the negative press because someone at EA said so, then you have to tell your publisher, bros, we get so much shit for this and we can do this once, we can do this twice, but the third time when we pull this shit, which is the third time, if they fuck over, people will stop buying our games because they don't run properly. And this is a huge problem with the industry, because many people of us, of us, of us master race people, and uh, of course console warriors and stuff like that, cool with everything. The thing is, Many of the people who play, for example, on console, nothing against you console players, are more to the casual side. They don't run with, like me, through all of the internet sites, all of the internet. And uh, say, for example, I am a huge fan of computer gaming. I am reading up stuff on the internet about computer gaming. I'm informing myself about a game before I buy it. Um, I'm looking into gameplay footage, I won't get too much hype because, for example, with Watch Dogs, and this is another point I want to make, if you get hype, you should be also critical with the product. And I don't see a point why someone defends a Star Wars because he's hype, but also criticizes everyone who bought Watch Dogs. By the way, I'm going to buy Watch Dogs because it's fucking cheap everywhere. Uh, no, but who is criticizing Watch Dogs for being a pile of crap or not what it was supposed to deliver. Uh, I'm talking about the technical things like poppins and stuff that were totally unnecessary and the graphical downgrade. Uh, you know what I mean. But why do people criticize a Watch Dogs and not a sequel of a game that delivers less and then like standard stuff 
than the uh, than the game before that. I don't understand that. I, I will never understand that. That you can excuse your own hype, but not the hype of other people. And that you are not critical with yourself. Um, and back to the topic of making sequels. I don't understand how a person can sit there and say, Hey, I am, for example, um, a developer of Battlefront. And I'm looking at this feature list, and uh, maybe I'm thinking something about this, or I'm a fan of the game, and I say, this was bad, this was bad, this was bad, it has to be gone. Like, why? Why not improve that? That should be your goal. You should improve the things that were bad, not cut them out. Cut them out is like saving development time, saving money, and being a cheap bastard. Sorry to say, but it's like... Seriously, it's like that. And um, the th same thing goes, for example, and now I'm transitioning, I'm done with Star Wars. Uh, I could rant when I'm, uh, I've am i tried the game at Gamescom or something new, some new information comes out. But um, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, expansions in MMOs, which uh, most prominently I'm going to talk about World of Warcraft. And uh, if you haven't noticed now, World of Warcraft is on a downward spiral at the moment, again, we, uh, with the subscriber numbers. At the beginning of the last expansion, Warlords of Draenor, the numbers skyrocketed to 10 million again, which is 3 million people before that. And no matter what people say, World of Warcraft is still the most played online game on the market, MMO-wise. Not League of Le I, I don't talk about League of Legends and MOBAs, I talk about MMO-wise. Um, so it's on a downward spiral. The thing is that the expansion was not that brilliant. Yeah, let's say brilliant. Um, they said they want to cut down the content from the expansion, make more expansions in smaller timestamps, but don't want to do huge development time on an expansion themselves. Which is, again, okay, in theory, when you don't include that they have the biggest World of Warcraft development team in all time. So, tell me, why can't I do shit in this game? I can do raids, PvP, and aside from stuff that I did uh, through leveling, like quests and exploring and finding treasures in Draenor, I can't do jack shit. And don't come we with pet battles. They didn't do jack shit about the pet battles either, except for including new pets. So, <clears throat> I don't understand where at the moment the appeal in this game is. They included the shipyard, which is like a second garrison table. The garrison itself is boring because it's like, Sorry to say, I always was defending that, but it's like a Facebook game. You send people away, you get no your uh, your new gear, and the problem is I don't even have an app for that. So if I send my people away, I can't just on uh, while I'm working say, "Huh, Herbert Derp, I'm sending new people away." That's not possible. Why am I supposed to play this game, pay every month for that game, if they first of all? deliver no new content until the next expansion, which is a reason for everyone who is bored of World of Warcraft to stop. If you have done the content and are bored and looking for reasons to play the game, stop until the next expansion. That's how I do it, because it doesn't make any sense. Um, then you have its, uh, yeah, then you have, uh, its new Tanan jungle which is like a new questing zone, followed by only days. Fuck you, Tanan's jungle. Um, well, the new raid, yeah, how entertaining that will be. Uh, like, for how long, not how entertaining that will be. That is one thing Drano did right. Raiding was awesome. But other than that, and PvP, which is like not developing too much over the years, like, new battlegrounds and stuff. Everything was lacking. Seriously. 
And uh, that is the problem Blizzard has. Blizzard already said, yeah, we uh, scrapped the garrison. And that refers to the Star Wars part before, where I say, why do we scratch the garrison if the garrison had so many, much negative feedback? Why can't we just make it better? For example, a thing to make the garrisons better is going out there and saying, you can join your garrison followers and the mission will be over faster. And then you have a set of missions that you can do or make it like, I don't know, yeah, a little dungeon. For example, if they have a dungeon run, you have to run with your followers. And then the equipment will matter. Then they will uh, heal you. Star Wars The Old Republic can do that. World of Warcraft can do that too. Come on. And the followers will just run after you and heal you and tank for you. Shouldn't be too complicated. The th issue here is, why are we again scrapping stuff we don't want? It's... The same, and now I'm bridging a bit far, but follow me with that one. It's the same with Pokemon. And um, for those who don't play Pokemon actively anymore, um, they have good concepts, but they're scrapping some of the good con uh, of the good concepts in the next iteration of the game. Meaning, for example. We got a hard gold and soul silver, the remix of the original gold and silver. We got, for example, following Pokemon. And this is a small thing, yes, but you had following Pokemon, you could talk to them, and it's just like when they follow you, they are happy. And you got that um, cool item which is called Pokewalker. Um, I think everyone who follows a bit of trivia knows what I'm talking about. Uh, the Poker Walker is like tr uh, is like a um, a tracker uh, which tracks your steps you take in real life. I don't know what the English word for that is. Sorry, um, and it just tracks where you're going, and you get new items for that. You can transfer Pokemon on that, and it will just you walk with it, and it finds new items that you can transfer into the game, and it gets happiness really, really practical. And the next game after that, all was gone. Like, wow. And not to say, black and white were also still sprite based. So you had to only add in the overworld the same sprites from, uh, from hard gold and soul silver. So, Yes, the tracking would have been hard, but why are we scrapping that concept? As well as fun stuff like the Pokeathlon, which is like Olympics with Pokemon. And every Pokemon had its own special strengths and weaknesses, and you could, for example, uh, do stuff like um, uh, running over hurdles and I don't know what, the rest was. I, I totally forgot that because I haven't played Hard Gold and Soul in such a long time. Um, but so much was scratched on the way to where we are now. And I have a feeling, for example, that stuff like Pokemon Ami, which is uh, the new feature where you can um, pet your Pokemon and feed it and stuff like that, will be scratched too in the future. I have a gut feeling. And um, I don't know why you would do that, as well as the um, transportability of um, Latias and Latios in the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire remakes of Ruby and Sapphire, um, where you don't need actually fly, but you can, um, I think, was it with Mega Evolving your Pokemon, the Latias and Latias, and flying somewhere on the map, even routes and islands, where there's no Pokemon Center and just land there? That feature, I have a gut feeling, will, will be also scrapped. Like, such nice features. And I don't know why you would do that. And this is the same with World of Warcraft. You get so cool features on the way and just scrap them again. For example, um, in World of Warcraft, a cool feature is the occasionally daily hub 
that you get somewhere along the line. And the daily hub was always like you go there daily, really daily, and get stuff in return for that. Uh, doesn't matter, for example, in, um, let me think where everything was. Um, in Burning Crusade, it was the uh, Keldalas Island. In Lich King, it was the Argent Tournament. In Cataclysm, I don't know if Cataclysm liked that one too. I'm thinking. Don't know right now. In, um, in, 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 in Pandaria, we had Timeless Isle. And in this one, Tanan was supposed to be that. But I don't understand why you would scrap those. Doesn't make any sense to me, at least. Um, because those things were entertaining for people, first of all, who were catching up. Second of all, you would get other stuff than only um, equipment out of that. For example, titles, pets, mounts. And um, the th same thing is, for example, the um, combat on horseback, which was also quite cool on the Argent tournament. Why do we just throw that out of the window? It's similar, yeah, it's like vehicle combat with uh, forced vehicles and melee and stuff, but like the vehicles are forced to move, so you have that horseback riding experience and then it was forced melee combat. It it was cool, but we scrapped that because, I don't know, because of inconvenience or... And um, then we get stuff like, for example, LFR, which people gradually dislike, many people gradually dislike, and uh, which is like, little story, I, I played on a private server for the first few months of my WoW history. And um, private servers were so buggy that boss mechanics won't work. That means the boss only auto-attacks, and that was the boss. Okay? So you could, for example, do an Illidan back uh, in Burning Crusade. Well, I didn't do Illidan because then I was already on real servers because I started right before Burning Crusade. Um, so, but in Classic, for example, if you did a dungeon, you could do it with two people. I remember that. On that private server, me and one of my best friends, we did a Warlock Paladin team. And I was a Red Paladin, which was bullshit back then. But you could do it because you could off-tank everything because the bosses didn't do stuff, they just auto-attacked you. So the Warlock and I would change with, he had his Void Walker, which would tank, and when the Void Walker died, I just healed myself. That was it. And then the boss would die, because we would out-damage the boss before he would out-damage us, because the boss wouldn't do shit. And that is LFR in a nutshell. You don't even have to have the 25 people, because the bosses don't do anything anymore. And shit like that stays in the game, but good shit stays in the old world, because you can do it later on. Yeah, but, but I don't want to do it always later on. Like, um, people would also, I, I guarantee, if more than two people would be watching this or listening to this, um, people are already uh, writing in the comment section or would be writing in the comment section where well, you can do old stuff. Yeah, but I did the old stuff. I play since fucking Burning Crusade. And I only pause for maybe two to three months when, when I've done everything. And if I pay for an MMO, I don't want to wait every week until I kill the same five bosses. And yes, I could do Mythic, but I don't want to spend more time on the game every fucking second evening than I have to. Like, when I'm done with the raid on Heroic, I'm done with the raid. I don't want to do anything more. That Heroic is my goal. I don't want to do Mythic because Mythic is like, even longer raid nights and uh, the question is when do I want to go to the gym and live out my other hobby than gaming um, and the thing is 
then I'm tempted to say, I have a game like, for example, Star Wars The Old Republic, and Dirty Bomb, and, um, what do I also play? Um, Skyforge, for example, Skyforge is a good example, um, where you don't have to pay at all, and still get the same amount of fun out of this. Especially in games like Dirty Bomb, where if you pay for the game, you're stupid. Sorry. Or you have so little time that you buy booze. And, yeah, I, I just don't know why people, like the big developers in general, are slacking with the development. Holy shit. And, uh, then my third topic is, uh, Wait a second. Uh, the third topic is... Sorry, had to check my phone. Thought it was work. Um, the third topic is, for example, um, sequels with another genre. Do you say genre? I don't know. Uh, with, an un uh, with another playstyle, game style, you know what I mean. Um, for example... Uh, the best example for that would be, let me think, let me say Dragon Ball games, um, and Zelda games. Those are the two that, where people are ripping each other apart. Literally apart. When it comes to what is the best version. And I'm in the category of, uh, 2D Dragon Ball games and 3D Zeldas. Um, but there are many people who are the other way around, and many people who say 3D Zelda, 3D Dragon Ball games, and stuff like that. So, let me say something about, because it's easier, about the Dragon Ball games. The Dragon Ball games have the uh, sickness of being an anime game. That means you want to have it like the anime as much as possible, which is understandable. Again, completely rational. But... With the big, big but. If you insist on having a 3D Dragon Ball, you should think about how good does a 3D Dragon Ball play. And if you say every 3D Dragon Ball plays well, then I would say stop shitting yourself, please. Because I am of the opinion that a 3D Dragon Ball game is always, always worse than, for example, Budokai or any 2D fighter at the moment of Dragon Ball. And I include the Super Sonic Warrior games because those are brilliant Dragon Ball games that are 2D and are even handheld. And I don't know what's wrong with them. They have a good anime installation except for the combo part, which I'm going to talk later about. Um, for those who just are not interested in hearing me blabber about fighting games and uh, how you could improve the Dragon Ball concept of fighting games, you can just turn off right now. I'm uh, That's my last topic. For those who turn off, goodbye. See you on the next rant or the next video or the next Amiibo review. <laughs> um, so, back to Dragon Ball. Um, the thing with Dragon Ball games is the 3D aspect does not work good, in my opinion. If you compare, for example, a Tenkaichi 3, which has a good 3D working concept, because, no shit, the, most of the attacks are one-hit attacks. That is the most important part about this. You don't have many bugs to consider. Okay? Um, if you take a Xenoverse, for example, I don't know how it was with Battle of Z, but I saw Battle of the Z videos and decided, nope, I'm not going to buy that. So, with Xenoverse, we have the problem of having that huge arena, which is cool. Again, everything cool. But, then we get attacks like, I don't know what the attack is called, the motherfucking spammer attack of the fucking Saiyans that everyone used in the first few days, which was ridiculously overpowered from Android 17, the Electro attack, 
which goes in a huge arc forward and stuns on the first hit if you stand right in front of you, which was like the melee killer, uh, the melee killer that was, it was ridiculous. And um, it doesn't work in that context because you have those multiple hitting attacks with stagger you, which stagger you. And if you, for example, compare some, it, it, the, the, well, blah, 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 blah. the problem with that is that it can bug out so very often. I, I've seen so many videos on the internet. Uh, if I find some in my history, it's so long ago since Xenoverse released, and I think most of it may be fixed. I don't know. I only played the DLCs afterwards because I didn't dare to go into competitive anymore since uh, everything really got nerfed quite a bit. Um, the thing is that if you get um, in a fight with someone who uses that, you always have the possibility that the ability bugs out and counts, for example, two hits instead of one, which is drastically in competitive matches. You have combos like you want to punch someone along a side on the edge of the arena and he floats slightly side, uh, to the left because it's the edge of the arena and the arenas are round, of course, so you can punch someone in the arena wall. And you always misfire your Kamehameha and um, your, I don't know what, everything, Special Beam Cannon, Gallic Gun, uh, you know the drill. And all of your supers can miss so easily on the edge of the arena, for example. It's just an example. I know, good, good, but you know what I mean. I only play melee characters in Xenoverse, so I don't care. Um, then you have the problem about uh, with the arena itself. Punch someone in the ground and you can you have a chance if you hit the right frame that you can combo them. Yes, I know in most fighting games I uh, quite competitively played, for example, Injustice. I tried to get into Street Fighter. That was not my thing, actually. Um, I th many combos are based off hitting at the right, the right frame, or many combos that are better than others by 5% are sometimes important to hit at the right frame. Point being that there should be no reason whatsoever that in a Dragon Ball game, which is not competitive to begin with because the games are so, well, sometimes so basic, especially the 3D ones, that you should not... Uh, to say it's not competitive is unfair. To say you should not put it into the perspective of, yeah, you have that one frame thing, and because that hit on the ground where you punch someone in the ground, he jumps up and you have one frame to hit, that's fair. No, it is not. Like, I remember where Goku was, um, even though the movie is not canon, was punched by a uh, cooler into the mountain, and cooler just overhead strikes him into the ground. Holy shit, like, does Kula give something about invincibility time in the wall, or on the ground, or what I, uh, what do I know? No, why should, and, and this is the thing that I, uh, think is the immersion of the game is not so good as people claim it to be. Yeah, you have the flying and the beams coming towards you, and that is all awesome. I don't deny that. That's very, very awesome. But if you, for example, look at a more cinematic fighter, which you could make Dragon Ball into, that would be strong, strong, strongly awesome. Like, for example, um, I have a drawing. I don't know if I upload it because it's quite complicated and uh, you have to be me to understand it. But if... Hmm, Maybe I do it. Fuck it. If you don't any understand anything of the drawing, then just ignore it. Um, imagine if you have a fight where you play Freezer and fight against Vegeta. So, 
and you start that fight and you get the first strike. So on a 2D fighter. So you make your, uh, for example, light, light, medium combo, which is like Freezer punches Vegeta in the gut, hits him straight for the head, and then the medium punch or maybe kick, I don't know, maybe Dragon Ball would be kick, more than medium punch. Um, and then Freezer would kick him just that he can be juggled. So, uh, like in the Budokai games, you could juggle enemies. It was very simplistic, but you could do it. So, now imagine if Freezer, just like for example in a Mortal Kombat or Injustice game, press strong attack and backwards, and then instead of the typical what Injustice made for your juggles, um, strong backwards, would kick the enemy, maybe two meters uh, in front of you, he would hit like an invisible wall, which, which was fucking stupid actually. And then he would fly up in the air so you could air combo him and then combo further. Okay, so what if you don't hit him that he flies towards you again? What if you kick him very far away, which was typical for Dragon Ball games, on a 2D platform? Yeah. So you have a giant arena. I mean, it's not hard to make a giant piece of grass. Like, scale, maybe one and a half size of a supersonic warrior stage. And you make that strike, strike him away, and then you can, if you have enough Kai, you can fire a death beam, which would be, after a certain combo step, which is included in the ability itself. For example, Death Beam would be 5 hit combo. Then you can fire a Death Beam, which unlike a normal Death Beam, does more damage, minus the combo multiplier, uh, like, um, I don't know, let's say the 3 hit combo does 15% damage, a normal Death Beam does 12%, so we would be by uh, we would be 27 uh, minus the multiplier. We would be, I don't know, 23, 22, 2-ish. Yeah, let's say it's about that number. And then we would add, for example, again, 3 to 4% dam uh, damage, depending on how strong the attack is. Maybe that you are about the same strength as the combo would be apart from one another, meaning the combo itself and the death beam alone, if both would hit without the enemy defending. But you're in a combo and he cannot defend the death beam. That is the important part. That means you juggle him into that four, uh, five hit combo, right? And then you would fire a death beam which would trigger a cutscene. The enemy can do jack shit about that. For example, in that v Vegeta uh, example, you see Vegeta fly backwards in the old Dragon Ball fashion when he kicks someone back in the 3D game. And then you would see it in the cutscene that Vegeta opens his eyes and gets drilled by the death beam through the chest. How cool would that be? Like, with many little cinematics. And then... You have that, uh, you make that Budokai um, 8 direction fighting, like Street Fighter has that, t uh, not Street Fighter, uh, Tekken has that too, where you can dodge to the sides. So you would dodge to the sides and make that arena a huge arena, like with mountains and everything, that you get so as many cinematics as possible. You would Pump that game full with those cinematics, like in Budokai 3, but even more. And then you would do combos like uh, Goku would do a spirit bomb combo, or generally an ultimate combo would be an 8 hit combo, and then you can do your ultimate. So, for example, Goku would do an 8 hit combo against Kid Buu, like light, light, uh, or, or for example, light, light, heavy. Where, Kid Boo f uh, where he kicks Kid Boo's feet away, then he would do medium, medium, light, where he punches Kid Boo uh, slightly in the air, 
Then he jumps, does one airstrike, does the heavy hit away on the ground, and then he can do a spirit bomb cutscene of the known spirit bomb where he turns into Super Sage. Um, so you could do so much with that concept that you can make a cinematic experience, an anime experience with a 2D game, and then add the system of, for example, um, Supersonic Warriors, where you can fly upwards, like you, if you press short, you jump and do the attack. If you press longer, you fly upwards. And then you can do, for example, a charge from all over the arena with a uh, charge attack, which you can, for example, if you uh, charge with back to the Vegeta Freezer example, Vegeta charges full power using his Kai towards Freezer. And while he does that, presses X, which is a strong punch. And then he can charge combo into Freezer, punch him away, and then you can do the typical teleport combo or charge further after him until you use all your Kai or with the teleport you get a few restrictions like for example two teleports max or the teleport strain more than the flying and Freezer can do jack shit so you would combo each other out with cutscenes with that awesome awesome cinematic playstyle and I don't know where the problem with that is I mean, yes, it is much work, but why not do that to please the crowd who wants to play Budokai? And please don't do quick time event shit like fucking Ultimate Tenkaichi. And also please the hardcore crowd and show the 3D crowd that it's better. Same goes for Zelda. Many people say the uh, 2D Zeldas are more, uh, well, better thought out because you don't have to work with perspective so much. Why not make the 3D Zeldas more complicated? Why not make uh, make it more like, for example, I don't know, punishing? Well, it's too hard then and Zelda is aimed towards children because Nintendo doesn't admit that the majority of players are the year-long fans. But um, why not make more hardcore Zelda and Combine both concepts, the 3D and the uh, top-down, where you do puzzles on multiple levels and do the complicated puzzles and add the combat mechanics of the 3D. So you have those combos, those hit combos, but have the uh, thought of puzzles from the 2D and make it just a little more punishing if you're bad and not always like herp derp I'm swinging my sword like uh, you can do so many runs without dying in older Zelda games where as a kid you failed yes but why not make a game for the well adult crowd but yeah I see I'm ranting for an entire hour now well five minutes about five minutes and um yeah, maybe in the comment section. Uh, I think many people may disagree with me. Uh, best saying I've heard is from one of my favorite YouTubers that you shouldn't agree with you 100% all the time. Like, I'm not agreeing with myself all the time. And maybe in two weeks when I'm listening to this shit, I'm saying, well, what, I, what was I talking about? Am I stupid? And sorry that... I may stumble upon my words and stutter or something like that. It happens because that is the first video in that length that I ever did. And I suddenly fell into German twice or so. So, sorry about that. But, yeah, hope to hear your opinions. And uh, I'm also glad if your opinion may differ because we want to improve gaming altogether. Why not do it in a way where we can be civilized? Right? So, see you on the next rant, or episode of my Let's Plays, or 